Welcome to this presentation. We will address today competency-based learning and, in particular, what is competency-based learning? I'm Serge Rave from IDPOS and Europortfolio, and this presentation has been developed in the context of the transit project, which goal is to support teachers to develop competency-based education in particular for the acquisition of key competencies. We will address a number of questions during these presentations. What is competency-based learning? What is the place of assessment? And how do we assess competencies? So we will address today the first question, what is competency-based learning? Competency-based learning can be defined as a structured approach to learning and assessment directed toward assisting individuals to acquire knowledge, skills, attitudes and values required to perform an activity to a specified standard. We often speak about KSA to refer to knowledge, skills and attitudes. We often forget about values and values are very important in competency-based learning. Competency-based learning is very close to outcome-based learning. In fact, competency-based learning is more directed towards vocational education, while outcome-based learning towards non-vocational education. In competency, we define what is expected at the workplace, while in learning outcome, it is about what is expected after successfully completing a program or a curriculum. Same definition, the context is slightly different. It is important to see the defining of learning outcomes as one key step towards defining competence-based qualifications. In other words, competence-based qualifications are one example of how learning outcomes-based approaches are used. This is a quote from the European Qualifications Framework series. This picture is very interesting. It has been developed by the National Institute for Learning Outcomes Assessment. When you read the keywords here, it's about really transparency, how things are clearly worded, permanently posted, updated regularly, and receptive to feedback. The specificity about competency-based learning is we focus on the learning outcomes. That is what you can actually do and not on the learning inputs. That is the content, the knowledge, what you must know. So learning inputs traditionally are defined in a curriculum, while learning outcomes are defined in standards. So standards are very important and we'll explore what competency standards are. What are competency standards? Competency standards are the result of a functional analysis of a sector or a particular domain. It is very different from task analysis. We are not looking at what people are doing today, but looking at a global sector and looking at all the activities within a sector to develop the standard. A competency is defined in terms of what a person is required to do, under what conditions, and how well. Competency involves the ability to draw on and mobilise knowledge, skills, attitudes and values to respond to a demand in a particular context according to agreed performance standards. In the context of EQF, competence is described in terms of responsibility and autonomy. So the difference between competence and competency, competency is really about knowledge, skills, attitudes and values. It is all that together. Well, competence just will tell that uh, you are responsible for the work of others or you are responsible for larger budget. So it's really for level of responsibility and autonomy that we use the term competence as opposed to competency. So. The functional analysis to develop standards of competence starts with the definition of the mission of a sector 
And then it is broken down into key areas, then into units of competencies, element of competencies, and even performance criteria, knowledge and understanding, <coughs> example of evidence. And this is an example in the world of management, the competency framework for management and leadership. The mission is to provide direction, gain commitment, facilitate change and achieve results through the efficient, creative and responsible deployment of people and other resources. So this is a global vision of what is management and leadership. If we look at teachers and we take uh, the UK professional standards framework for teaching and supporting learning in higher education, there are a number of, of areas of activity function of the standard is to support the initial and continuing professional development of staff engaged in teaching and supporting learning. I don't go into all the details of the UK professional standards, but you need to understand that this standard is slightly different from the management standard because this is specifically for one profession, which is teachers in higher education. So there, is, there are different standards, standards that cover a job role like teacher in higher education and other standards that cover all function like management. Uh, this is another kind of standard. These are standards for key competencies developed in the UK. <clears throat> and you will see in these standards a very detailed level of information, the evidence that you will provide in order to get a qualification. Here you can see that the competencies are extremely detailed in terms of what is expected from a person who is competent at level 3 in communication. This is another example, which is about application of numbers at level 3. So good standards are forward-looking. They describe the competencies needed in the future. They don't describe the past, they don't describe today. They are tools for transforming a sector. They cover a whole area, transversal like management, a sector like education. They should be adaptable, shareable, easy to repurpose, and they should be accessible in terms of language and technology. Why use competency standards? The competency standards can be used to inform students of program standards and expectations. They can be used to create frameworks for assessing the effectiveness of programs to develop a quality assurance mechanism within an institution. They can help to provide evidence of student learning for professional accreditation. They can also help the selection of assessment methods by identifying the types of evidence that students are to produce. They can also inform employers on graduate skills, guide the planning of a curriculum, and also to support continuing professional development, as we have seen for the teacher standards. But they can do much more than that. These are just a few examples of what you can do with competency standards. A few words about competency and qualification frameworks. Here we have a number of frameworks. The first one on the left is the European Qualifications Framework for Lifelong Learning. The second one is the European Framework for Key Competencies. The third one is the UNESCO ICT Competency Framework for Teachers. And the last one is the Teacher Competency Framework that we are discussing in the context of the transit project. If you open these standards, they look very differently uh, the way they are organized and, uh, and content. So frameworks differ greatly in terms of granularity, that is le the level of detail you will find. In some, you will find up down to the competency performance criterion. In terms of completeness, do they cover all the activities within a sector or do they focus just on one profession, like teachers? How they span across the different levels. <clears throat> if you have a competency framework that covers from level 1 to 8 within a sector, it's a wonderful tool to help people to know what will be required for, from them if they want to progress in their career. The methodology developed, some are really based on functional analysis, some others are less so good, Competency standards are developed on task analysis and also in terms of, of vision. What is the vision people have? What are the values uh, that are underpinning the competency standards, the competency frameworks developed? One 
thing which is very important about competency standards is how they help to implement quality. You need to think about competency standards as something which is at the origin independent from qualifications. You can build qualification and competency standards by selecting some element of competency and say, you know, the, this qualification requires this and these competencies. But at the heart of a competency framework, the goal is not to deliver qualifications. It is really to provide a common language within a sector, within a profession. It is a tool to help people to grow. It is a tool to help a sector to transform. And the other point which is very important is that qualifications are independent from education and training programs. If you take a country like the UK, they have awarding bodies that are independent from education institutions that deliver the qualifications. The qualification, if it is based on the standard and you have qualified assessor and you have qualified professionals, then you should be able to assess the competency of a person without worrying about what has been previous training or previous learning. You should be able to assess it based on the evidence provided by the learner. And this is something we will see later in, in the next chapter when we will speak about assessment of competencies. So, independent from qualifications, independent from training programs. And this is a way we can have quality in education and assessment. And good competency frameworks are critical to building good competency-based learning and assessment. So in summary, what we have seen about competency-based learning, we have discussed competency and learning outcomes. We see that it is something which is very, very similar. We have discussed competency standards, which are very close to st student learning outcomes. Competency frameworks, how important they are to support competency-based learning. In this chapter, we have seen what is competency-based learning, and in the next chapter, we'll see what is the place of assessment in a competency-based learning program. And you will see that it is absolutely central to competency-based learning. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, give you foods for thought, and uh, it's your turn now. Thank you. Thank you, Esther, for being with me for this presentation. Thank you, Serge.